how's it going everybody this is the nitty gritty my name is chad with me as usual is leonard and this is a show about wrestling but this is not one of our full-length episodes this is one of our random match reviews and the match that i stumbled across on facebook is from 2002 it is a dark match and you don't always see dark matches leak out into the ether um one match i really wish was available to see would was Kurt Angle's one of Kurt Angle's first matches, which was a dark match against Owen Hart. Um, and there's a picture of that match, I think. But uh, as far as I know, the match itself doesn't exist. What a treat, though, that would have been mm-hmm. to see. Um, this match is Mr. Perfect versus Brock Lesnar, which, you know, I know that those two guys had an exchange on i believe the uh i believe that was the plane ride from hell um yeah and you know i think mr perfect bragged a few times about uh taking him down taking brock lesnar down on the plane (laughs) if i'm wrong about which particular flight that was excuse me but uh i know that those two guys had an exchange um on the flight i don't think it was malicious in nature either i think everybody was just horsing around but yeah, uh, well, both have amateur wrestling backgrounds. Both are from Minnesota. So, you know, I could, I could see those two having a very, well, I would call it maybe a playful rivalry. Yeah. And so, yeah, this match is from 2002. Um, you know, if you look at the video, which I'll, I'll try to post a link to the video um, in the description, um, but it was hard to tell if this was Raw or SmackDown. I'm going to guess and say it was Raw because uh, I don't see the, uh, you know, fist, the SmackDown fist, which this would have been that era. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, to me, this is just, it's interesting that this happened at all because Mr. Perfect's comeback into WWE didn't last very long. Um, he came back at the Royal Rumble and was one of the final three, I think in that Royal Rumble, he had a really good performance, um, still looked good in the ring. And I think that, you know, Brock Lesnar having him to work with, early on is is something we can talk more about here so um the match itself we'll just get started with their entrances mr perfect mr perfect does his you know vintage perfect entrance and uh brock lester comes out in shorts (laughs) which i found interesting because uh it when he actually debuted he just had out the regular wrestling trunks and he had paul Heyman in tow paul Heyman was nowhere to be found here this is just brock on his own um but it is a very young brock lesnar so, uh, Leonard, any comments so far? Well, you know, j- just to, to jump back a little bit, I was really shocked when you sent this to me. I didn't know that this existed. Right. And yes, Kurt Henning and Brock Lesnar existed at the same time, but you don't really think about it. And finding things like this always fascinates me. There's a video on YouTube you can find of an episode of All That where Keenan Thompson has a sketch with Chris Barley. Wow. Yes. Similar idea that that yes, these people coexisted for a very brief period of time, right? And actually worked together. That kind of got lost to time. So I was very fascinated uh, by this for that. They, this is one of those matchups I think I've seen in the fancy wrestling leagues. I do from time to time. People put these two right. together on paper. I think it's a good matchup. You know, Bracket this time especially was closer to his amateur roots, and Hennig had the amateur background, which I mentioned. So, um, yeah, I, I think this is, 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 is really good. And I will just say I like the story that they tell here before you kind yeah. of get to a blow by blow is because it's really about Lesnar's strength and just being and Hennig just being completely surprised about how damn strong he is. Right. And Hennig just doing everything he can think of to combat this guy building up to cheating. But I'll, you know, I'll let you take over for kind of the blow by blow. Well, yeah. So, uh, you know, this, it starts out just like you said. I mean, I, I certainly, I don't have, you know, every move listed here, but it's with, you know, you have Lesnar basically overwhelming Mr. Perfect with his strength and his agility. And the fact that he, this is like kind of this immovable object that he has to go up against. And for a while, it seems like it's going to be a squash in favor of Brock Lesnar. Mm-hmm. But when I wa- when I saw this unfold, I knew that it was before his debut. But I thought to myself, "Wow, they are they're going to have him destroy Mr. Perfect." 
<laughs> yeah, you know, and Hennig was selling his ass off, which he always does. And nobody and he really like takes him. a beating. And I was and and I was really giving Hennig a lot of credit. Wow, good for you to you know go in there and put this. It's a dark match, but to put this guy over and see how the crowd reacts. Right. Awesome. Good on you. Yeah, and um, you know so. You know, they exchange chops and, uh, you know, Lesnar has, you know, uh, you know, a lot of clotheslines and stuff like that. Shoulder shoulder blocks, that sort of thing. Um, Mr. Perfect gets in some offense here and there. But mm -hmm. it, the and ending, Brock does sell for him, which I which I like that he did. Yes. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. Um, and, and like, you know, like Leonard said, like Mr. Perfect was such a great, you know, worker in the ring and he sold so well with anybody and you know he is no stranger to going up against bigger guys he worked you know uh, with hogan he worked with british bulldog and you know so he could work with bigger guys really really easily um and i'm pretty sure these are both minnesota guys yeah they, they're i don't know exactly where they're from in minnesota but they're right. both from minnesota yeah right the area um and so the ending kind of comes out of left field like a left field it's just basically like you said the story being told is you have this young guy who's extremely strong and can do what he wants with somebody once he gets a hold of them. But at the other end, you have a wily veteran who knows how to squeak out a win when he needs to. And that's what happened here with the. Yeah, it's Lesnar posts his shoulder. And I think that looked good. He goes in that corner a thousand miles an hour and yeah. re really hits it nice. And, and then that sets up the perfect plex. And again, I was stunned. I figured he was going to kick out of the perfect plex and then the finish would come from there. So I was stunned by the win. But it was cool to see Hennig win. F5 into the audience. That would have been cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Mr. Perfect wins. And this match is uh, not very long. Um, I want to say, what was it, five, seven minutes? Something like that? Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah. And so. I'm, I, I, because I remember I wrote one of my notes here is I would like to see them have gotten double the time, maybe 15 minutes. So I think it was maybe just under seven. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, th I feel like by the time Lesnar does debut, I don't even, I don't know if Mr. Perfect is still there at that point. He was there such a brief time. And I remember it distinctly because, of course, I was a, a Kurt Hennig fan and I was so happy to see him back. And I remember uh, he had a raw main event against Steve Austin. Yeah. And that was, I think, shortly after the Rumble. And it just didn't take – the fans at this time didn't seem to know him or didn't right. seem to care. And that really saddened me um, with with him. I don't think he was at WrestleMania. I, I want to say I remember hearing rumors of what the plan was for him at Mania, but I don't remember what those were specifically. But I don't think he was there by Mania. Yeah, it is kind of sad when you think about it because I remember the Rumble specifically and him returning and like hearing that music, which is just such classic music. And, you know, I was really excited, like, wow, you know, and then when he lasted as long as he did, I, I was even more amped for that. Um, but it was almost like this was that weird pocket era where, you know, fans that grew up with him might have been starting to not watch as much you know or you know maybe it just the nostalgia thing would just wasn't there as much as they wished it would be but uh mm -hmm. but yeah he did have a. I don't fault WWE there because I think they did try to give him a very significant push when he returned for a few yeah. weeks and it, it oh, just absolutely. did not yeah. absolutely um so yeah go check this uh match out let us know what you think uh you know Lesnar was very green here but you know like I said earlier being able to take advice from somebody like Kurt Henning is, uh, you know, invaluable, I would think. Um, I'm sure he was excited to work with somebody that was from, you know, his area of the country. So uh, absolutely check it out. Let us know what you think in the comments, if you liked it or not. And uh, by the way, the comments on Facebook that I was looking at were all pretty complimentary. Um, mm -hmm. They were basically all just talking about how much they – admired Mr. Perfect and how good he was at selling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, not really any trolls that I saw, but good. Uh, anywho, um, check out our other episodes, our full length episodes, our stupid questions and our segment surgery videos. And for Leonard, my name is Chad and we will see you next time.